One of my favorite South Beach sessions from the last couple of years is when these two guys just got together and started talking baseball, completely dorked out and went microscopic uh, through a century of baseball history because these two human <laughs> beings care more about baseball than almost anybody I know. Tim Kirchin is here. Mike Schur is here. Before we get to Kirchin, who we are legitimately delighted to see here, and Schur, who we are less delighted to see, but happy to have around nonetheless, we have a staff of the day that Mike Shore promises us has the potential to impress Tim Kirkshin. Let's go. Woo! Yes, wow. that's uh, that's some overpromising right there. Ballsy. Let's see if he delivers. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. <laughs> the stat of the day is presented by Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Folks, in an era where everybody strikes out all the time, Courtesy of Sarah Langs, the great Sarah Langs. Her Twitter handle is at Slangs on Sports. Yuli Gurriel is now up to 47 consecutive plate appearances this postseason with zero strikeouts. The are there are only four longer streaks of postseason plate appearances without a strikeout to start a postseason. They are 1979 Tim Foley of the Pirates at 48. Yuli Gurriel himself in 2019 had 48. In 2006, David Eckstein started his postseason with 50. And in 1995, a great 90s baseball named Joey Cora had 51 consecutive <laughs> plate appearances without a strikeout. Here's the craziest part of this. The guy that Gurriel passed to go into fifth place on this list, his own manager, Dusty Baker, who had 45 in 1981. Tim looks wildly unimpressed. I feel like no. Tim knew that. I feel like he knew all that. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I didn't know that. And I'm wildly impressed. People who don't strike out, especially in today's day and age, is incredible. We, we've been over this, fellas. <laughs> Yogi Berra, one year, 1950, maybe, hit, hit 28 homers and struck out 12 times the entire season. Stan Musial had one season, 1943, whatever it was, had more triples than strikeouts, 20 to 18 in a season. So whenever anybody doesn't strike out and puts the ball in play, I am impressed. Never mind that Tim Foley choked up on the bat about eight inches in order to put the ball in play, but good for him. David Eckstein is like two inches taller than me, so it's his job to put the ball in play. But for Gurriel to be on this list twice, and for Dusty Baker, pretty good hitter in his day to be on this list, is all pretty impressive. So I know how the game's played today. We have more strikeouts per game than ever before. But anyone who puts it in play, I think, deserves a little bit of credit, especially in today's game. I think I deserve credit for actually impressing Tim Kirkjian, and I think <laughs> levitard has got to eat his words. Also, by the way, in uh, that Yogi Berra year, 656 plate appearance. Excuse me, that's a fine. <laughs> really choked yeah. up about it. Six hundred and fifty-six plate appearances, twenty-eight homers, twelve strikeouts. It's you guys are having a yogi off right now. Mm -hmm. Now, now that you've brought it up, though, Mike, because you're insistent on saying that I'm eating my words, I was waved off uh, because the timing didn't work. Amin wanted to summon the chickens on what we thought was a Tim Kirkshen lie when he. Uh, said that he was wildly impressed by your stat. <laughs> Tim, Tim, you could not have communicated it any more blandly. Like, no, I'm impressed. Just admit it's, it. It's Tim. like when people say, oh, that's funny, instead of actually laughing at the joke. That's uh, what happened. You were being nice. There was too. a little cutting comment, too. Like, and by the way, he choked up eight inches yeah. on the bat, too. It was like, just <laughs> get, in case you think hey, you know more than me. You need to sprinkle a little bit more, like, uh, bona fides on it. <laughs> He's so mad. <laughs> No, the, the point about the note is that Sarah Langs is as good as I've ever seen at coming up with statistics, but statistics that are interesting and are valid. So I should have been more enthusiastic given where Mike got the stat from Sarah Langs, who I've worked with for years. Uh, she has a remarkable look 
at statistics. She's a dear friend of mine, and man, is she good. Tim, would you be kind Jesus. enough to stop yelling at us oh, and creating geez. a toxic Sorry. workplace environment? Sorry. Like, I, 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 I don't, it's been a while since we've upset you this way, but your rage <laughs> continues to be a problem. I thought it would subside the older that you got, and it, it seems at this point that it's unreasonable, and I think it might be hormone or steroid related. It's neither. Listen, I am That's very right. excited. I was... I called the game on June the 25th. I was the color guy on the radio at Yankee Stadium when Christian Javier was part of the three-man no-hitter at Yankee Stadium. And then it was done again last night. So I saw Christian Javier pitch two no-hitters, essentially, and Ryan Presley finish two combined no-hitters. That's never happened in the careers of two players that they were involved in two combined no hitters and the second one came in the world series also <laughs> this postseason which has been absolutely insane uh jt real muto hit an inside the park homer which was the third inside the park homer in the last 93 years in the postseason and I was at all three of the 93. <laughs> so I was at this one at Rio Muto's and um, Alcides Escobar to start the 2015 and Paul Molitor in 1982 against the Brewers. I was at that game too. So the only three inside the park home. Thank you. In the postseason in the last 93 years, I was at all three games. This is what I live for. It's, it's the coolest thing ever. Tim, Don't what? look at me, Louie, him on that. <laughs> no, we That's did. genuinely we did. great. Yes. Me. That, what is wrong with you people? He was, waved me off the first time he said he was at the game, but the third time we had to hit him with it. I mean, <laughs> there was an inside the park home run. This, this World Series seems pretty good. <laughs> Chris Cody. You guys are the worst. Chris Cody actually said while Kirkshin was talking that Kirkshin could say that a horse came out of, of the bullpen in the fourth inning of a game in the World Series in the 1950s and, you know, struck out three men in a <laughs> row and that he would believe it. <laughs> That anything that Kirkshin says about baseball, because it's him saying it, uh, we tend to believe it. But, Mike, uh, can you guys tell us how we're supposed to feel about the combined no-hitter in a World Series? Because I feel like it should have been a seismic event, and I was disappointed with my own reaction to it. So, you're not alone. I was in an angry text exchange last night with Joe Posnanski and Brandon McCarthy because they were saying that they didn't feel anything, that it, there was no drama to it, that there, it wasn't making them feel the feelings that they feel. Well done. I mean, you had to throw McCarthy in there. I mean. <laughs> Just the worst. Just the absolute worst, all of you. You can't ask a question and then when the response comes, make fun of the person who's I was asking. in a text chain with some friends. Yes, that's <laughs> it. That's it. You'd have to Thank name you. the friends. I mean. Excuse me, Whittingham. Their bona fides matter to this discussion. It's not out of nowhere. It's a it's a famous and well-respected baseball journalist and a former Major League Baseball pitcher. That matters. That's different than just saying some friends. Continue, please. I'm sorry. The point is, those friends were saying that they didn't feel anything or they didn't feel what they felt like they should be feeling. I felt the opposite. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really cool. The Astros were playing for their season last night. Their arguably fourth best pitcher through the game of his life, their bullpen's unhittable. The Phillies have been destroying the ball. I thought it was fascinating and great and exciting that the Astros pulled back to even in the series instead of going down 3-1 with a no-hitter. I thought there was only one thing wrong with it, which was I thought they missed a huge opportunity, and at the end of the no-hitter, all four pitchers <laughs> should have run out to the mound, and every catcher on the roster should have run out, and they all should have jumped into each other's arms. But other than that, I thought it was great, and I loved every second of it. Tim? Yeah, look, we've been playing, the, this is the 118th World Series, and last night was the second time we've ever had a no-hitter. How can you not see that? And Mike is right. They the, the Astros had to win that game. Otherwise, they might lose the series 
tonight. I mean, that's possible with the way the Phillies are playing. And I found it fascinating. A team hits five homers one night and gets no hit the next night. That, of course, has never happened before. So I I was completely invested. Now, would it have been better if Christian Javier had pitched a complete game? Well, of course it would have been better, but that doesn't happen anymore. That never happens anymore. He threw 97 pitches. He's 25 years old. We protect our young pitchers. They took him out. There wasn't even an argument at the time. What are they doing taking him out? Don Larson's perfect game. He threw 97 pitches. It's a different game today. And that's why I'm okay with what happened last night. It was really cool. And I can say I was there. So yeah, I'm with Mike. I'd like both of you to discuss just what it is that you've enjoyed most about this postseason. Tim, you start. Well, I've enjoyed just the craziness of it. This is why baseball is the greatest game. And not just we, that we had a catcher hit an inside-the-park homer, but we had that absurd game in Toronto where the where the Mariners were seven runs behind and came back to win. Third time in the history of the postseason that a team has been seven runs ahead and lost the game. I was at that game also. We had a no-hitter tonight, uh, last night. You know, game one of this series, the of the World Series, the, they're behind five to nothing and come back to win six to five. L look at all the crazy things that have already happened in this postseason. It's been absurd. I wrote for ESPN.com that we could have a terrible World Series and it wouldn't matter because the first three rounds of the postseason already saved it. And now we've gotten... I think it's been a fascinating World Series. Game one, game three, and game four in their own right were really interesting games. Even if it was just a Lance McCullers is the first pitcher ever to give up five homers in a World Series game. All this crazy stuff has happened. So I think it's been a fabulous postseason. Sorry, I'm just uh, texting Steve Carell real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I this the series has been incredible. If you if you haven't enjoyed this baseball playoffs, you won't enjoy any baseball playoffs. There are, there have been enormous comebacks. Teams have been down five runs and come back like four or five times. There there were a bunch of hundred win teams that were easily dispatched by teams that in previous years like the Phillies wouldn't have even made the playoffs. There have been there was a no hitter in the World Series. There have been dramatic home runs. There was an eighteen inning scoreless game that lasted five and a half hours. There were there the, like everything about this has been interesting. Like there's been it has not played out in any way, shape, or form the way that people predicted it would play out. The Mets were dispatched very easily. The Braves were gone. The Dodgers lost to the Padres, who were then beaten by the Phillies. Everything about it has been great. Like it's been so exciting and dramatic. The games themselves have been more interesting, I think, than they have in the past because in the last few years, you've seen mostly teams get up big on other teams and then just kind of quietly suffocate them. The Astros, who are easily the best team in the AL, are in in a real danger of losing to an 87-win Phillies team. Verlander pitches tonight. Verlander, a Hall of Fame pitcher, first ballot Hall of Fame pitcher, multiple Cy Young Award winner, going to win the Cy Young Award this year needs this game for his like personal legacy because he's 0 and 6 with a 6 wow. ERA in the World Series in his career. Like this is fascinating. This is incredible drama. Like everything about this has been good.